Hello everybody, Keaton here today with the second half of the review showcase, I don't know, of uh, the Jurassic World Reborn mod. And for, oh, actually I should mention this real quick, I am sorry that the end of the last video did get cut off, um, only three dinosaurs were missed, uh, and it was for a pretty stupid reason that the video cut. But anyway, I'll be showing off those last three animals in this video, as well as how to make a dinosaur, the a majority of the building blocks and the various cool items you have to use and some vehicles and plants and all sorts of cool stuff. I won't necessarily be going into the crafting recipes for any of this mostly because they are complex with a lot of very expensive materials. So instead of showing you the crafting recipes, I'm instead going to suggest you download something like Just Enough Items, uh, which I will have a link to download in the description if you want to get that mod to go along with this one. I would highly suggest it, it makes it a lot easier to figure out what you need to do. Um, anyway, moving on with the review. So, before me here we have a wide selection of machines and blocks, and this is the process of making a dinosaur. So for those of you used to fossils in archaeology, this is going to come as a bit of a shock probably, although I'm sure most of you are familiar with the Jurassic Craft system by now, uh, but it's, it's, it's complicated <laughs> for sure. So anyway, uh, to start with, in your world you'll find things like this. So a dinosaur or a dinosaur plant fossil block, amber, or ice shards. And using these you'll find, well, you will you can't, well these two you mine right away and you get uh, things like, I guess, I think, what is it, it's like a frozen lamprey or amber, that was not what I meant to do. Uh, but with dinosaur fossils you actually need to get plaster and bandage, which is just gypsum powder, paper, and white wool, and you get a good amount of it. You click it on that. And bada bing bada boom, you now have a wrapped fossil, which, um, if we just, I guess, take a bunch of Allosaurus fossils here, you can then mine with an iron pickaxe. Same with these, you need an iron pickaxe to mine them. Now let's get a amber real quick. I want a uh, mosquito and amber as well. Um, now we have a couple of blocks over here. So this is the first machine you're going to want to use. It is the cleaning station, which uh, you're going to want to first fill up with water and then you're gonna throw your encased Allosaurus fossils over here. So this is gonna clean them up from the blocks. Oh, I need to get the amber back out. I actually did not mean to remove it. Um, and it's got a cool little animation like that. I, I, that's actually really cool. I rather like that. But anyway, oh, why am I getting a Xenuanopteryx bone from an Allosaurus fossil? That's kind of weird. But anyway, you see you're gonna get fossils from these. It does go through a fair bit of water, so you're going to want a good supply of water nearby. But um, if we just keep filling that up, and just kind of keep it going like that, uh, you start to collect a good deal of bones from these. Now, I believe it's a 100% chance you're going to get a bone from a fossil. However, it isn't a 100% chance you're going to get a DNA from that bone. So what you're going to do once you have your bones uh, is you can either do something that will show off over there in a few minutes, or you take it to the fossil grinder where you just chuck these boys inside and hope to get a DNA. Yep, so just chuck them in there. It starts grinding them up. I don't believe there's an animation for this one, unfortunately, but you get things like flint, you get things like bone meal. I think there might be one other drop, but the thing you're really hoping for with this is to get a Allosaurus soft tissue, which will hopefully give you well, which is your first step to actually getting an Allosaurus. So let's see if we can get one here. Um, we're getting a bit more flint and stuff. Again, it's probably a good idea to have a big lab where you can have all these machines right next to each other because, well, actually, no, you probably want a couple of cleaning stations. You probably want a couple of fossil ground. You probably want a couple of each machine, in all honesty, so that way you can kind of industrialize the process a bit, make it a bit uh, faster because this can this tends to take a while all right so it doesn't look like we're really going to get anything so i'm just going to get an allo whoops an allosaurus uh soft tissue which is what we're hoping to get from this i was really hoping i would get one so i could show you guys like it actually happening but we're apparently getting very very unlucky okay so anyway you're supposed to get allosaurus soft tissue from this so now we have two different blocks here that both do the same exact thing, but for different materials. So the first block we have here is the DNA sequencer. It has three slots. You're going to require a storage disk, which uh, is crafted with iron nuggets and basic circuits. Uh, and these storage disks, well, this, this uh, machine here is only for soft tissue. So if you have fossils that you've ground down and you've turned into soft tissue, 
you'll put it in here with an empty storage disk and it will start turning it into DNA. Now, if you've got amber or the lamprey and ice, I believe, the lamprey, frozen lamprey, you will instead chuck it into a DNA extractor, which only has space for one item. So these are a bit less efficient, but I believe DNA has a much higher chance, or you, the amber has a much higher chance of yielding a high quality DNA. So the DNA system in this works a lot like it does in Jurassic World Evolution or Jurassic Park Operation Genesis, where instead of it being like fossils, where you automat if you get the DNA, you've got the dinosaur, you actually have to work for that. You have to get usually a, a fair amount of DNA to get a complete dinosaur that you can cultivate. Uh, so amber is a really great way to get a lot of progress for a dinosaur or any prehistoric animal, but it is a random animal at a random percentage. So you know, it's not necessarily the most efficient way of doing it, but I believe amber is also a pretty rare block. This is by far the most efficient way to get a single dinosaur, and oh, there we go, we got an actual naturally generated uh, allosaurus tissue. So it's not the most common. You're gonna be going through a lot of fossils to, uh, to get some dinosaurs here, but it is really cool. You can see the tissue getting analyzed right here or sequenced. Uh, when that's done, you'll get three storage disks with a variety of percentages for the allosaurus DNA and this. I'm kind of waiting for that so we can go on to the combinator and whatnot. Um, this is probably going to be the longest part of the review, so if you want to skip past the rest of this, if you already know, we'll go on to like the rest of the blocks and showing off a bunch of the other cool stuff. But I figured you, there are going to be some people who would probably like some help here. So anyway, you can see we got a 2%, a 17%, and a 22%. Those are all pretty abysmal scores. But again, that's, that's the DNA sequencer. Again, you're going to need a lot of stuff here. But this is where the DNA Combinator comes into play, where you can basically throw together two storage disks that don't really have much, and it'll start combinating them into a higher percentage. And let's see what we get from the Amber. We got a Ludodactylus at 62%. I believe you, I'm not exactly sure. I'm thinking you need 75% or better to actually create the dinosaur. But again, you can see what I was saying. This, not very, good way to get high percentages, but this is a really good way to get high percentages, but it's a random animal, so it may not be the animal you actually want. Anyway, once we finish with the combinator, we get hopefully a good enough DNA quality to put it into the DNA synthesizer, which you need DNA nucleotides and an empty test tube, and that will create, um, well, let's just show you guys it because it's going to take a really long time considering how things are currently going. You get something like this. You get a Car Caradonosaurus or a Charlie or a Leptictidium DNA, uh, which you can then throw into an embryonic machine with an empty syringe to get an embryo, which now, depending on what you're doing, the path will change. So if you're creating a dinosaur, you're gonna use these two machines, but if you're creating something like an aquatic creature or a mammal, you're gonna be using this. So I'll cover this one first. The Cultivator. This is an old block. A lot of people who played like classic Jurassic Craft, we all know what this is. You fill it with water, you fill it with uh, nutrients, and then you chuck the baby animal in there or the embryo in there and it will cultivate. Uh, now this is something newish that I should explain, I guess. And that is uh, this temperature bar at the bottom. Uh, this is used to control basically what gender you get for the dinosaurs. So you get a male or a female. And I believe if it's in the orange, it's random. So yeah something to remember. But anyway, that's how you make the uh, the non-egg animals, and when you finish, you get something like this. The gestated uh, Tylosaurus, Mosasaur, Leptictidium. So, the animals that don't hatch from eggs. Now, if you're going to get something like a dinosaur, also, as you can see now, we have a 39% Allosaurus there. Um, you're going to instead use the embryo calcification machine, throwing in the syringe of whatever animal you just got, it will put it into the egg, which you then throw into the incubator where it will uh, keep them, will warm them up until they hatch. Uh, and use peat moss for that to heat it, I believe, at least, last time I checked. Anyway, that is the long and laborious process of making a prehistoric animal in Jurassic It's going to take a long time to get started, but once you get started, it should go pretty quickly. Anyway, moving on now to, in my opinion, the more interesting stuff, and that is the decorative blocks. So we have a couple of useful blocks, technically. We have the feeder, we have the bug farm, and then we have these four, which I'm actually gonna show off in a few minutes uh, in a much better way. Uh, but they are the, not the gypsum bricks, the tour vehicle track, the low security fence, the low security fence pole, and the low security fence wire. Uh, all of these are used, these are actually very practical blocks and I rather like the look of all of them. But anyway, the next couple we have are 
the clear glass, which has a nice connected texture. Looks pretty good. The gypsum stone. Now this is how you get gypsum powder and stuff. Uh, and you also can use it to make gypsum bricks, which is what I've used here. And I really like the look of these. I think they look really, really, really nice. Um, we also have gypsum cobblestone. Anyway, coming up here, we have two prehistoric bales, which I believe you can throw in the feeders, if I'm correct. Yep. And these are crafted just using a variety of prehistoric plants that are added in the mod, and they look really good. Speaking of prehistoric plants, there are a couple of trees and one of the doors you can craft from the... Oh boy, let's see if I can pronounce it correctly. Araucaria, I think is how you say it. Uh, the Araucaria tree creates the Jurassic Park Visitor Center doors, and it looks really, really cool. I know it looks a bit blurry, but I think that's mostly due to the shaders I'm using, so sorry about that. But yeah, they look really, really nice. I rather like them. Uh, and there, by the way, if we quickly head over to plants, there are woods, logs, stairs, doors, fences, fence gates, all that for pretty much every single tree. So there's a lot of stuff for you to play around with and look at. Anyway, um, oh, there is one last, there are two last blocks, I actually forgot to put them down here, that you get. And they are reinforced bricks and reinforced stone. Uh, of which they're crafted by putting an iron ingot surrounded by stone and then you can either use for stone reinforced stone to create some reinforced stone bricks or you can just put stone bricks around iron uh it's actually the same crafting recipe as the clear glass so all of those are the same exact thing you just switch out the blocks you need anyway coming on to this the fossil or skeleton assembly table now, you remember I mentioned uh, there are two uses for the fossils you're going to get out of the fossil cleaning station. You can either grind them down and turn them into dinosaurs, or you can come all the way over here, and I've got a stegosaurus set up and ready to go. You can come in here and start, well, putting the dinosaur together. I don't know why I have two of those. Um, dinosaur rib cage, the neck, the dinosaur head, tooth. Uh, what are these the front legs which i believe go like this oh wait no 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 they go like that actually and just like that we have a segasaurus fossilized skeleton which will chuck right there and look at that there we go we just built ourselves a dinosaur skeleton which i don't know i really really like that system i think it's awesome uh, it's very, I don't know, it's, it, it's a good amount of interaction to actually make your dinosaur skeletons for your museums, and I think it's a very cool system. Plus you get a really awesome looking skeleton at the end. Speaking of the skeletons, here are some just to be shown off. I don't believe I showed these off in the last video, but they look really, really cool. I absolutely love them. And there's actually two types, uh, depending on how you get them. So you'll notice these are the ones you get from the fossils. They have a very gray texture, obviously, because they're fossils. But you also have these fresh skeletons, which are, I believe, only obtainable through killing dinosaurs you've resurrected because, well, you're gonna get fresh bones if you kill them. <laughs> but anyway, it's the same exact process of building them. You just need all the bones. Um, now, I do want to show off two particular things I really like. One being this uh, ammonite shell. I, it's the Parasphinctus uh, ammonite, whatever it's called. Um, and it has this really cool base plate for it. And, same with a lot of them, uh, the marine animals. They have these awesome stands with them that allow you to actually make them look like proper displays and not just like they're floating in the air. So I, I really like that. I think that's a really nice amount of detail to throw into the mod um, and just really adds a lot to it. Anyway, uh, following the skeletons, we have the action figures, which are just tiny colored dinosaurs. It's the exact same model and texture as the dinosaur, uh, the big one you get to uh, create. It's just really small in a block instead. They look very cool. You can easily make a really nice gift shop with all of these. And moving on past all the dinosaur stuff, we get to the painting section. Now we have a couple of types of paintings here. We have the murals, which... Uh, some of them, it's kind of hard to tell what they are without like flying back a good ways. I think that's the T-Rex in the uh, visitor center at the end of Jurassic Park. I think, at least. Um, we have a mural of a T-Rex itself. And then, I mean, these are really cool. They're really cool for like uh, just putting around your park and buildings and stuff to make add a bit of extra life to them. But this, these here are the ones that I absolutely love. Um, I can't get them. Okay, I believe they're in the decorations tab here. Uh, murals, paddock signs. 
These are awesome, they really are. So you just click on the block and it brings up this big menu with all of the prehistoric animals and you can just click on through to find exactly which one you want. I love system, I love when mods put painting systems like this in where it's just super intuitive and you just flip through and it shows you exactly what you're looking for, which I love. Um, I also love that all of them have a different texture behind them or color behind them to differentiate the types of animals we're dealing with. It's, I don't know, I really love that. I think that's super duper cool. Anyway, uh, I've, I've got a couple here just to show off some of my favorites. I really like the Crassigerinus one, that one's really cool. Anyway, moving on, we have the attraction signs. These are massive, massive signs. You get a couple of them for like Gallimimus, Velociraptor, T-Rex, all sorts of stuff. I picked these two because these two were my favorite. I like the aquarium one because it's covered in corals. I really like the picture for that. And the botanical garden. I, I just like botanical gardens, so I figured I'd pick this one. But yeah, they're really, really cool. Um, if I scroll all the way down here, you can see we got like Triceratops, Safari Attraction Raptor, Aquariums, and there's with plants and without plants and all sorts of cool stuff. Anyway, moving on past the murals. By the way, if you see that happen, um, and there might be some issues with the vehicles here, uh, that's not, I don't believe you'll actually encounter those playing normally. I think it's a bug with my shader pack I'm using that causes that to happen. But anyway, moving on and forward. We have three vehicles, and I'm sure if you've played any version of Jurassic Raft, you're already familiar with these. The helicopter, the tour vehicle, and the Jurassic Park Jeep. Sorry, I have to take a sip of water. My voice is getting a bit tired. But anyway, uh, these three, again, I, I feel like most of you will have seen them before. They're very cool, very well modeled, very well textured. They've got cool things like, you know, the doors open when you get nearby and if we hop in. The, the steering wheel actually moves when you turn the vehicle. All sorts of cool stuff like that really really nice if not insanely expensive to build and oh they've actually put the the mod logo on the top of this one which is really cool anyway um i have some stuff i'd like to show off uh before we get to the dinosaurs before we get to the dinosaurs and showing off this stuff uh these are the tour vehicle tracks um that i mentioned earlier crafted like that um if you take the tour vehicle which is kind of breaking right now and Oh yeah, it kind of, again, my shaders have caused some issues. And you drive it onto these tour vehicle tracks, it acts kind of like a powered Minecraft rail and will bring the car around. Now, it, it only works uh, when you're in the vehicle itself, so you can't just put these on the track and have them run around, unfortunately, which I would kind of like. If I was gonna make a big park, I would love to do that. Just stick them on here and have them run around the park while no one's in them. But it's still very, very, very cool. I'm, I really like that system. I think that's, I don't know, I, I just think that's an awesome system to have. Anyway, on to the dinosaurs and the stuff I didn't get to show off in the last video. Uh, first off, oh, actually, yeah, first off, before we get into it, this is, or these are the uh, fence blocks I showed off earlier, put together. They look incredibly cool. Um, they all have like connected models and stuff. So when you place one of the, what are these called? The low security fence poles on top of the bases, they get this cool uh, model change. Same when you connect them like that, like all sorts of cool stuff. Uh, the wires are awesome. You get little, if I break this one real quick, yep, you can see they get little connection points and stuff. It's it's just really cool. It's a really cool system. Anyway, um, the first dinosaur we have to show off is, of course, the Tyrannosaurus Rex, which I'm very sorry that the three animals that I missed out, two of them are by far the most iconic dinosaurs. So yeah, I guess more of a reason to watch this one. But for, we, first off, we have the male T-Rex, which looks fantastic, and the female T-Rex. Uh, their models are incredible. The T-Rex heads as well, like, I mean, that's just insane. They look insanely good. I really, really, really like them. Now, I'm afraid, oh, by the way, there are goats in this mod, and I haven't seen this yet. I don't know if this is in the mod. I wanna test it real quick. If, uh, there's a unique animation for the T-Rexes to eat the goats, I don't know. Nope, there isn't. That's unfortunate. Maybe that'll get added in a future update. I'm going to suggest that to the dev team if they can make it happen. But uh, yeah, anyway, uh, next up is the Velociraptor. And I'm very afraid these guys are going to get eaten by the T-Rexes because of the fence. Um, but it, it'll be fine, hopefully. Uh, we have the male Velociraptor, which has the Jurassic Park Lost World skin. They look really cool. And the females are the, well, Jurassic Park Raptors from the original movie. Both look awesome. Very, very, very cool. Very well modeled, very well animated, all that kind of stuff. Anyway, the final animal we have here is the 
Zenyuan Opterus, which is a pterosaur, which I think I've created too big of an apiary for. I don't think it's actually this big, but uh, or that big. But we have, yeah, they're pretty small, actually. We can throw them in and look at them. They're very cool. Very, very cool. I like that the <laughs> their flying animations are kind of funny to me, but they, they look super cool overall. And another awesome pterosaur to be able to add into an aviary. Anyway, before we move on to showcasing the plants and the last few things, uh, there is one little chest over here I want to show. And that is the guns. <laughs> so, oh, wow, that, that, I don't know why that lagged. Um, but we have four actual guns. We have a Glock 17, the Spaz 12, the Utas, and the Remington. So four ways to defend yourself against the dinosaurs. And by far, I mean, these are useful, but I think this is the most useful one. The dart gun, which comes with a variety of darts. We have a poison dart, well, two types of poison darts, a tranquilizer, a tracking, and a lethal dart. So if you need to put a dinosaur down, you get a lethal dart, you get a tracking dart. This one is my favorite, personally, because this is probably how you're meant to uh, get into your dinosaur exhibits, should the uh, dinosaurs, uh, you know, need a repair or something. But you can tranquilize them like that, and it, it's incredibly effective. Just hit them once. It is sometimes hard to hit them though. Their hitboxes are kind of weird on a couple of the dinosaurs and it makes it a bit difficult. But I believe they go to sleep for about a minute before they'll wake back up. But yeah, again, very, very cool. I really like that feature. That's, it's, it's really awesome. Anyway, moving on to the last few things to show off and that is the plants. We have, a, we have quite the variety of plants to go through. Uh, things from trees, we have a ginkgo tree a calamite tree, a saronia, I guess is that was, is what that would be called, a phoenix tree, a oh, another saronia, oh, I guess I put two of them in, and uh, an Ar arcaria. Very, very, very cool. Um, I think my favorite is probably the phoenix. This this thing looks awesome. I'm, no, I'm sure some of these aren't actually trees, but instead like cycads or ferns, but I'm going to call them trees for the sake of it. Ease. Um, but anyway, we have tons of little plants here. I'm not going to go through all their names, but yeah, just a variety of them. They all look very unique, all look very interesting, lots of cool textures and colors. Uh, this is probably my favorite, the Heliconia. It, it just looks super duper cool. Um, we also have moss, and you're, I believe these spawn naturally in swamps, and you're actually going to need a lot of this and probably a moss farm in order to get peat moss, so that way you can incubate your animals. Uh, but yeah, that's that's what we got so far. And the final thing to show off is the aquatic plants. We have a variety of prehistoric corals and sea anemones and all that kind of stuff. Very awesome. I always like when uh, mods like this add in some underwater plants. Always cool. But yeah, that's all we've got to show off for now. So thank you all for watching. Let me know what you guys think of the mod. Um, again, the mo the reborn mod as well as just enough items will be linked in the description down below so you can get both of those mods. And yeah. Anyway, thank you all for watching, I hope you've all enjoyed, and until next time, see ya.